Well, this is Jim, W4JBM. Um, I got another thing up on the bench here that's uh, kind of interesting. This is actually a, uh, it's a precision capacitor, uh, tunable. It's made by General Radio. The General Radio part number um, is 722-MEQ. And you can see this is serial number 7182. Up above there is the, um, I believe the, uh, the army marking uh, when they took possession of it maybe a, uh, a number they referenced to it or reference it by uh, T581889 and uh, just to kind of give a quick overview uh, obviously you got the dial we'll talk a little bit about that in a second um, there used to be a calibration chart over here with correction factors uh, so you could correct the dial uh, readings um, to get a more precise reading and then there's uh, really uh, there's there's an output um, to uh, 105 um, micro microfarads or picofarads as we would uh, typically refer to them today and there's uh, 10.5 uh, range and if I'm reading this right and I haven't hooked it up to a meter to really confirm it if you go between the two um, capacitances they get subtracted out um, the, I, I assume the, the smaller one gets subtracted out of the, um, the larger one. If you go from the center, the center point is actually uh, connected to the frame. It's also connected to the rotor part of the capacitor. We'll talk about that also uh, when we open it up and look inside it. The gauge or the dial here, um, you can see this goes from, uh, it starts at zero there. And um, if I make a full, full revolution, now we're coming around to 4, 4.5, 6, 8, and there it hits 0 again. So basically it's um, a 0 to 5. Now over in here, you can see that this is also moving, uh, and this is in increments of 5. Like there's 15, 20, 25. We're at 25 now. Um, so I'm assuming that the, with the dial on this, which goes from 0 to 5, is added to whatever number um, you're, you've just passed uh, on, on that particular one. And uh, like I said, with, uh, with correction factors that were typically down here in, in uh, this placeholder, uh, you'd be able to um, uh, get very accurate. Um, I was reading a, a, another manual for a different general radio um, capacitance standard, and it was talking about uh, being within 1.5 uh, picofarads anyway, which would be um, about 1.5%, which is still pretty pretty accurate this is uh there were four four screws that um, that hold this into place the uh the box itself is uh, a fairly nice wooden cabinet and uh inside it's uh the, the put uh it's copper lined um to to make it rf proof shield it a little bit um this is the inside. Uh, so the, the shaft that we were turning comes in uh, here. There's a worm gear and then a larger gear. This is the, um, uh, the larger capacitance, the one that goes up to 105. This is the one that goes to 1.5. You can see they are staggered that um, this one has the, um, the statter portion of the uh, uh, capacitor on the bottom. The stator part's the part that does not move, whereas this one has it on the uh, the top. The um, the rotor portion that is in here and does move is the part that is also connected uh, to ground, and it is connected to or that well ground is also connected to the the copper copper line chassis, um, which would minimize any effect. And then this dial over here is the one that we were seeing that um, that read off in fives. This dial up here is the one that goes from uh, from zero to five. So this needs uh, needs a little bit of uh, grease and oil to uh, uh, to get it turning smoothly. Uh, you can actually see there's some some old grease that's in there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. You may wonder why uh, why you would even use one, but actually this this fits very well with something I've been wanting to uh, to work on for a while, um, which is um, a Q meter, the ability to read the uh, the quality factor or the Q of uh, of coils. A lot of times when you do that, you want to do that at a specific frequency. Uh, to do that, you need a capacitance, a known capacitance that's in parallel um, with the Q with the uh, coil you're measuring the Q of. So something like this will. Uh, 
will let me um, do that in effect um, and with a fair a fair degree of uh, a fair degree of accuracy while I was looking at this it uh, it also reminded me that I've got a couple other uh, precision standards that around here so this one came from the estate of a silent key this one actually came from a friend uh, who was cleaning out his basement uh, it was a ham fest find for him uh, but this is a helipot it's a um, they, they call it labor, laboratory model t10a uh, but basically it's a five kilo ohm resistor uh, it's linear to within 0.1 percent uh, the dial reading in ohms is plus or minus one percent, and you can see that it's uh, it's basically a ten-turn potentiometer, and and on the front here we've got uh, got a dial that that reads from uh, zero to one hundred, and then uh, on the upper part are the uh, uh, additional numbers. I assume those go up to probably ten. Uh, I haven't really I've never messed with this that much either. Um, Okay, it stopped there at 10. There is an 11, but it doesn't uh, doesn't get over to that. Uh, so basically, we can direct read without an ohm meter um, the resistance here uh, you know, within five five percent or one percent or so uh, of accuracy just using um, the dial. Actually, there'd be 10. Let's see, 10. Uh, then there's a hundred, so that'd be a thousand a thousand increments. So you can direct read to. Um, since it's 5,000 ohms and 1,000 increments, um, you'd be able to uh, to direct read to within uh, 5 ohms, um, which is 5% of the, uh, actually that's 0.5% of the 5,000. So um, fairly accurate direct read. Uh, not sure. I haven't messed around, like I said, with this a lot. But, uh, but that's kind of interesting. Another thing that I've got is a uh, uh, actually a... Um, precision voltmeter and uh, this one you can see it's uh, electric instrument service Inc uh, that's actually not the manufacturer I don't believe I believe that's just the calibration certificate uh, up in there um, although they may be the manufacturer too because it does have uh, the model is C-SP it's got a serial number it's accurate within 0.25 percent of full scale Talks about the voltage range measure 200 ohms per volt, um, so you can see the the uh, the 500 and the 100 um, millivolt range. It seems okay. Yeah. So here's here's a a 50 millivolt range input, a 100 millivolt range input, and then there's uh, volts and milliamps. And there's uh, there are dials. Um, to um, to let you use uh, or to, to select that. So if I wanted to do milliamps, I could switch this on the right-hand side. Normally, I set the volts uh, on that dial, but if I set it to milliamps, then uh, then the milliamp dial, and then I've got a common input, uh, 50 milliamp, 100 milliamp, or mil millivolts. Sorry, 50 millivolts, 100 millivolts, and this one is uh, is driven by this. There's a you can see there's a pointer up in here uh, that comes down um, actually that goes into this hole up here and uh, this when it's depressed is uh, it holds the dial in place uh, so the dial doesn't swing around so if you uh, if you were taking this and transporting it um, that would prevent the, the, um, the needle from bouncing around and potentially some mechanical damage to the dial that could affect the uh, uh, the accuracy. One other thing that's kind of interesting about this is that uh, in here it talks about uh, so the 50 millivolt range uh, the device would show 10 ohms of resistance on the 100 millivolt range it would show 20 ohms of resistance and it should be used with uh, leads that have 0 0.26 ohms uh, of resistance. So there's actually a set of, of leads that uh, are part of the, the test set they go to uh, screw down terminals. It's a fairly, fairly healthy set of uh, of cables there. Um, so, it's a, a lot of times this type of equipment, um, you know, realistically, I mean, like back here, I've got a a, a, a Radio Shack uh, volt ohm milliamp meter um, that I paid. Uh, it was on sale, and I paid something like 
uh, I think it was like twenty dollars for. Um, so yeah, you know, that's that's fairly accurate uh, in terms of measuring resistance and voltage. So a lot of this stuff is just uh, it's been put on the shelves, uh, discarded over time. Um, but it is laboratory grade, and as you mess around with uh, with electronics, like I said, this. Uh, this is going to be um, a nice basis for building uh, a Q meter off of. Um, things like this are just, they're handy to have around. They don't uh, necessarily replace, uh, uh, have, yeah, here's a resistance substitution box. So, you know, if I needed to figure out what kind of resistance I needed to put in a circuit, I would tend to, to use the resistor substitution box, not use uh, something like this. But uh, if you're building something like a, a bridge, I don't see, actually I've got, uh, a while back I was working on a project, uh, a bridge comparator that uh, would let me compare two different uh, uh, elements to make sure they had the same impedance and basically I could switch back and forth. There's a uh, um, an input and an output on the, uh, with B and C's and then you, you've got uh, one component, the other component uh, could be adjustable, but basically uh, uh, you can figure out where they, they both are in sync, whether you vary the frequency of the input source or vary the, uh, the value of, uh, uh, of one of the uh, devices. So there's some interesting little, uh, little projects that you can, uh, can tinker around with, uh, and that's part of how you, uh, you learn also. Uh, so this, my, my plan right now is to, uh, to clean it up, uh, grease the, uh, the gears, uh, I'll probably pull this off. There's a sticker here that is dated from the form itself. It's DA label, um, 1st of January, 1970. It's a serial number. It doesn't look like it has an actual date on it. Um, but this is from sometime in the 70s. This was probably made uh, a decade or so before that. Um, I'll probably pull. This is... Uh, there's four screws that hold this in. I'll probably pull that off, um, salvage that so that it's so I don't destroy the label, um, put in a new plastic front, and uh, and try and come up with my own set of correction factors just based on uh, uh, something like uh, one of my my own. I've got a uh, almost all digital AAD. Uh, it was this was a uh, uh, a kit that I built, uh, which is a an LC meter fairly fairly accurate LC meter. I've also got, uh, I got so much stuff on the shelves that, uh, up back in there is a, uh, LCR bridge, um, that I could use. So, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I'm not sure I can come up with a real meaningful set of, uh, of correction factors. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of give you a, a quick view of, uh, of that. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's massive. Uh, it can go up to one kilovolt, uh, across the terminals without, uh, the air dielectric breaking down, um, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and some of these other precision instruments that, uh, you know, the, the time, uh, I actually, I, I saw um, a listing for one of these uh, selling for $1,500. I think it was $1,499. Uh, there was a list on the internet whether they really sell for that or not. I, I can't imagine anybody really paying something like that. But, but new, it probably was well over $1,000. Uh, something like this would have been new, um, you know, in today's dollars, probably uh, a few hundred dollars. The precision voltmeter, um, you know, given that it, somebody had to, uh, to actually calibrate each and every one of them, and usually that calibration is, uh, is traceable back to something like the National Bureau of Standards, uh, this, this type of device would have uh, sold also for, for probably over a thousand dollars in today's dollars. So um, some interesting stuff that you can pick up. Uh, like I said, this and this were given to me by uh, another ham who was cleaning out his basement. Uh, this one came from, uh, from from the garage of a silent key that uh, that I helped clean out. So uh, nothing invested in any of these. Um, and uh, but some interesting things that I can do. I will uh, when I do get around to actually building the Q meter. I will. Uh, I will put a, uh, a video up demonstrating its use and, uh, and talking a little bit about the approach I use there. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I always appreciate likes and uh, subscribes. Have a great day.